Hello, my name is Martin Hausner, and today we're reading from my book, Uplift Yourself, Change the World, and this is the chapter on forgiveness, my specialty. Old wounds that go unhealed might be old, but the wounds are still fresh. Forgiveness heals these wounds. The meaning of the word resentment means to re-feel something. So that something that happened in the past, we're feeling today, and it's very, very alive. Sometimes it's even more alive today than when it happened. Sometimes it's even more intense. Because between the time that it happened and today, a lot has happened. And maybe that event has hurt us in a way that, are, that we suffered. And so that suffering has created more intense emotional negative energy. So the problem when we don't forgive is we're carrying this heavy grudge, this heavy burden, this wound. And we think, well, maybe it'll just heal because doesn't everything heal over time? No. Some things get worse. So why would you want to carry negative emotional energy over something that happened in the past that you can't change? It's over. Forgiveness means to give up all hope for a better past. When you let it go, when you give up that hope, then your wounds start to heal. If you've been hurt, the door to your recovery is through forgiveness. And the last thing I want to say, which is so important, because I study and practice East, Eastern philosophy and spirituality, and my experience is that when you practice forgiveness, you become extremely elevated in your consciousness, extremely uplifted. It's very, it's a very amazing practice. So not only will it relieve you of your burden, but it will uplift your consciousness in ways that nothing else can. This quote is entitled, Keeping Resentment Alive. Resentment is not holding on to us. We are holding on to it. We keep resentment alive. If we didn't, it would die a natural death. Now, this is interesting because when we feel resentment or any negative emotion, it feels like a natural response to what's happening. And it doesn't feel like we're keeping it alive. It feels like it's grabbed onto us. So let's switch that around. It's not grabbing onto us. We're holding it. The realization I want you to have, which is very important, is that if you're dealing with issues of resentment, you can let them go. The only reason they're still there to this day is you're holding on to them. You're keeping the fire of resentment alive. You're not letting it just go. You're not letting it just die, but you're doing something to keep it alive. And you might say, no, I'm not. It's just there. I'm not doing it. I, like, I would like to let it go. But it may not feel like you're keeping it alive, but try to understand that you are keeping it alive. This is how it works. So the world needs more people who are going to let resentment go and replace it with forgiveness. We don't need a lot of people who are cultivating resentment. That's not going to help us. It's not going to help anybody. So just try to get your head around this idea that if you have resentment in your heart, somehow or other, you're keeping it alive. It may not, you may not be aware of it. It may not be obvious. But just believe me, accept it. I've, I've been teaching this a long time. This is very clear to me, that if we have resentment within us, somehow or other we're doing something to keep it alive and well. And if we stop doing that, it's going to go. We're going to allow it to leave. Because if you starve something, it will die a natural death. If you starve your resentment and feed your self-forgiveness, your resentment will die. It's just going to go away. So don't feed it. Don't feed your bad qualities. Feed your good qualities. Now, this quote is entitled, Guilty of Not Forgiving. My spiritual master said that either benefit or loss is God sent, and thus it is God's grace. Therefore, if we don't forgive, 
we are as guilty as our offender. We are guilty of not forgiving. In other words, what he was saying is that in the arrangement of the universe, there's karmic reactions for what we do. But the karma that we get is meant to teach us. So it's not really bad, even though it seems bad, because it comes with a lesson. We may not understand the lesson right away, but there's something there to edify us. There's something that we are meant to learn. So if we don't understand that, and then we're not forgiving, we, in a sense, become as guilty as our abuser, because ultimately he was just an agent of our karma, bringing us a lesson that we needed to learn, and now we're condemning, excuse me, now we're condemning the messenger for bringing a lesson that's very important for us, and we're, we're neglecting to recognize that this is happening, we're, we're turning our back to the lesson, and so we're remaining unforgiving, and so then, in that sense, we are as bad as the person who hurt us. Of course, now, you might say, well, what if that person raped me or stole my money? I'm not bad like that. I understand that. But still, put in a proper context, if it's a karmic reaction that's coming to us that we created at some point, how can we blame that person? So to be resentful, it doesn't make sense because we're only getting what we put out. Forgiveness, letting go of resentment. It's the only way out of your pain. Today's quote is entitled, Challenged to be Kind. Your forgiveness and kindness are tested when you are challenged to offer them to those who don't deserve them. So, the previous quote, we talked about this, and I want to tell a story. There was a yogi, and yogi was traveling during a rain, the rainy season in India. It rains for four months, so... When it rains, there's little ponds everywhere, and he saw a scorpion. He was walking through this little pond. So he tried to help the scorpion out, and the scorpion bit him. And he did something strange. He picked the scorpion up again, and the scorpion bit him again. And he continued doing that until he got the scorpion out of the water, and he got bit many times. And there was a man watching this, and the man was thinking, why is he doing this? Is he crazy, or is he enlightened? What's the reason? I have to ask him. And so the man said, I saw that you kept picking up the scorpion and the scorpion kept biting you. And I don't understand why you kept picking him up if he continually was biting you. And the yogi said, I learned a great lesson from the scorpion because the scorpion was biting because it's his nature. And I was trying to help him, and even though I was trying to help him, because it's his nature to bite, he just wouldn't stop biting. didn't matter that I was trying to help him. So I thought, well, my nature is to be kind, to be generous, to be compassionate. So if a scorpion is not going to give up his nature, even though I'm trying to help him, why should I give up my nature even though he's trying to hurt me? So if you look at forgiving logically, you're going to think, why should I forgive that person? They treated me this way and that way. They don't deserve to be forgiven. They don't warrant it. They didn't, they didn't earn it. So I'm not going to give it. That's totally material logic. But from the spiritual perspective, you live with an integrity. You live within the integrity of who you are as a spiritual being and your ideals of kindness, compassion, and so forth. So therefore, you always act one way, no matter how people treat you. That's why this story is so nice, because it teaches us to act according to what we value and believe to be true, no matter how others teach us. So when the scorpions of this world bite you, don't kill them, don't retaliate, be kind to them. An open heart. Forgiveness brings us to a high level of spiritual consciousness. Forgiveness requires compassion, and a compassionate heart is necessary for spiritual progress. My spiritual master, he observed something which is quite interesting. Maybe you can relate to it. It's a lot of people practice spiritual life, but it's very selfish. They want to feel good. They want to feel peaceful. It's more about them than compassion for others. 
And he said, the highest spiritual quality is compassion. And so sometimes in the name of spirituality, we are mimicking material consciousness. It just it doesn't seem material because it's guised within a context of spirituality. But there's a certain aspect of our consciousness which can be very, very self-centered, very selfish. I want the spiritual for myself. I want to feel good. I want to feel the bliss. But the highest level of spiritual consciousness is compassion, to feel the pain of others and try to alleviate that pain. In another quote the other day, we said that there is enough pain in this world that we don't have to give pain to anyone who's hurt us. Karmically, they will get their pain. There's universal law of justice. It's not our position to play God. It's not our position to be judges. It's our position to be kind, to be generous, to give. That's what it means to be spiritual. Ultimately, that quality of compassion, it's so valuable. And as we said the other day, it's so valuable not only for the people we give the compassion to, it's valuable for us. Because when our heart overflows with compassion, then we become extremely elevated in our spiritual lives. So compassion, obviously, it's necessary for the world, and it's also necessary for us to give it to the world, because that way we'll be, we'll be evolving to higher and higher levels of spiritual awareness. Very important chapter, so I think you're going to like this, and I think you're going to really benefit from it. Forgiving transforms your life. It forces you to raise your consciousness to the supernatural realm in order to show kindness and compassion to someone who hurt or abused you. So if you listen to the other videos, we've been talking about this a lot, how forgiveness is a divine consciousness. And in order to forgive, it forces us because we can't forgive unless we become compassionate, compassionate unless our heart opens and softens. So in the process of learning how to forgive, it forces us to elevate our consciousness. It forces us to soften our heart. Now, I've been teaching forgiveness workshops for about 12 years. And one thing that has become very evident to me is that forgiveness is not an intellectual process. It doesn't happen in your head just because you understand that you should forgive, even you understand how to forgive, you understand why to forgive. It doesn't happen that way. You, you understand the logic of forgiveness, the philosophy of it. It happens when your heart softens. Forgiveness is a transformation of the heart. So therefore, when you go into a forgiveness process, a real forgiveness process like the one I teach, it totally works on transforming the heart because when the heart softens, naturally in a soft heart, you don't want to hurt anybody. You will feel the pain of another person. You'll feel the pain of the person who hurt you because people who hurt us, they're also hurting. And instead of wanting to retaliate, you actually feel their pain. Isn't that amazing? You feel the pain of the person who hurt you. So that's what it means to be forgiving. That's what it means to go through a forgiveness process. That's why it's so powerful. It's so transformational. And the last thing I want to say is if you, if you try to look at forgiveness logically, it doesn't work. That's why you'll say things, well, I'm trying to forgive, but I can't, or I just can't understand how to forgive or why to forgive because you're in your head trying to figure it out. It has to go into your heart. Your heart has to change. There has to be an opening, some kind of spiritual awakening within you. And when that is there, it automatically happens. So by going through a forgiveness process, that transformation will happen. That's why it's said to forgive is divine, because it brings you to a divine level of consciousness. And that's why the forgiveness process is so valuable and so powerful and so uplifting and so important, and why I encourage so many people to do it, even the people who don't think they really have big issues. It's still going to help you tremendously to go through a forgiveness process. And most of the people who don't think they have big issues realize when they go through the process they do have big issues. They just suppress them or deny them. Today's quote is entitled, Love Your Enemies. Loving those who make us happy is natural. Loving those who have hurt us is supernatural. 
Love your neighbor, that's easy. They're next door, you never see them. You have a big fence. Love, uh, how about loving your family? Sometimes that's hard. It's a challenge, right? What to speak of loving your enemies. That's amazing. Now, what's so nice about being hurt, and I know this sounds strange, is because now you're given a chance to show kindness and love and compassion to someone who doesn't deserve it and if someone has hurt you. And so if you were not hurt, you wouldn't be able to practice forgiveness. So it's actually good. I don't want to be unsympathetic. But let's take this as a philosophical idea. It's actually good or a theoretical idea that someone has hurt you because now that someone has hurt you, you can learn to practice forgiveness. And by practicing it, you'll be enriched. You'll be elevated. You'll, you'll actually appreciate that you were hurt because when you come out of this hurt through forgiveness, you'll be so much better off. Another example we often give is if you want to learn tolerance, how can you learn tolerance if there's nothing to tolerate? So if the universe or God circumstance sends somebody that upsets you, that's good because you're going to have to now learn to tolerate it. You needed something to tolerate, and so you could take it that, yes, I need to learn tolerance, and this person has been sent to me by divine grace for me to learn tolerance. So don't look at the bad as bad. Don't see it as bad, but see it as something which is necessary for your growth and appreciate it. And so when the bad comes, I have a little mantra. Thank you. If every bad thing in your life comes and you can chant this mantra, thank you, the next thought is that's going to be there is, okay, why am I saying thank you? What, what's going on here? What am I supposed to learn? So that is a very, very powerful mantra because then you'll see everything is working on a divine level to help and enrich you. Thank you. If, you're, if you believe in God, thank you, God. Or thank you, universe. However you want to say it, thank you for sending this. I know there's a reason and a lesson, and I'm going to find out what that is, and therefore I'm thanking you in advance.